I'm Chef Jennifer Cavillas, and today we're going to be making a traditional carrot cake. In order to do that, we're going to be using a mixing method called the blending method. This is one of our most simple mixing methods. It's used by taking sifted dry ingredients, combining all of your wet ingredients, slowly mixing the wet ingredients into the dry ingredients so there's no clumps, and then folding in any inclusions. In this case, inclusions could be nuts, chocolate chips, shredded fruit, um, but in our case today, it's going to be shredded carrots. Now, um, carrot cake falls under fat-based cake. So there are two forms of cake, foam-based cakes, that would be your sponge cakes, which have higher ratios of eggs, or fat-based cakes, which have a higher ratio of fat and sugar. These cakes are more dense and more moist, as you would think of with a carrot cake, and with blending method specifically, you're usually going to be looking at liquid fats, which means oil or melted butter. So let's get started. So we're going to get started by preheating our oven to 350 degrees in a conventional oven and about 335 to 340 in a convection oven. We're going to get our pan prepared so that when our batter is ready, we can go ahead and get it ready to go in the oven. So I have an 8 inch pan here and a piece of parchment that I've cut to 8 inches. Um, this is just to make sure that our cake does not ever stick to the bottom and it's going to release really, really easily from the pan. I like to put a little bit of pan spray right in the bottom. This helps that paper stick down inside there so none of the batter really gets up underneath. And it also kind of prevents any air bubbles that might get sealed underneath there that are gonna cause me any trouble later. So once I have that paper down, I can spray the sides and bottom of the pan. All right, so I'm gonna set this to the side until we are ready to bake. So, as I mentioned before, we're going to start off by sifting all of our dry ingredients. I have 220 grams of bread flour. Now, bread flour is a little unusual for a cake of any kind because it has a high level of protein, which means that it takes in a lot more moisture, and if you don't have enough moisture, it can give you this really chewy texture. However, with a blending method cake, we have a high liquid ratio and a high fat ratio which makes it very, very tender. So what this is gonna do is absorb all that extra moisture coming from our carrots and give us a really nice cake. So I'm just gonna sift this in. And then I'll add my cinnamon, my salt, my baking powder, and my baking soda. I have about four grams of each of those items. I'm just going to put those right on top. Now that spice mixture, feel free to add whatever you like, um, depending on the fruit or vegetable that you're using. Um, we're going to be using carrots today, but you could easily substitute that for shredded apples or pears, even pumpkin or banana puree if you wanted to. So I have a little cinnamon to go with that, but feel free to add dry ginger or cardamom or any kind of spice that you think is going to enhance whatever it is that you are making. So that's all sifted in together nicely. I'm just gonna take my whisk and make sure that everything is completely combined. Now I'm going to take my 165 grams of oil. And my 145 grams of eggs and combine them together. And these are going to be my liquid ingredients. Now generally, Oil and liquid do not mix together. Um, however, what's going to help bind these two together is this lecithin, which is a natural emulsifier that is present in my yolks. So you'll see these will come together really nicely and smoothly, and I just want to whisk them until it looks like one complete mixture. And I don't see any oil floating around in here. So you can see how these are really bonded, and it's really changed the viscosity of that liquid. So you'll notice that we haven't added any sugar yet. Now, sometimes during the blending method, people will add the sugar to the liquid ingredients. I prefer to add them to the dry ingredients, and here's why. 
first of all, sugar has that granular texture that's really good at breaking up any kind of clumps that might be present in your flour. Second of all, sugar is hygroscopic. What that means is that sugar loves moisture and it draws it out of anything that's around. So if we completely cover all of our dry ingredients in that sugar, it's going to draw the moisture from the liquid ingredients into our dry ingredients, helping us create a really nice homogeneous mixture and really get um, all of the liquid mixed with all of the dry without having to over mix. So I'm just going to add all that sugar, it's a lot of sugar, <laughs> into my flour. It's 285 grams of sugar. Now you can see that that is completely mixed. So next step, I have all my dry ingredients and all my wet ingredients. I'm going to take that wet and I'm going to slowly start mixing it into my dry, usually in about three additions. I just start mixing right in the center until this kind of starts to get nice and thick. You can see it's starting to pull that flour from around the edges. Now I can add just a little bit more. Same thing, mixing in the center. You'll feel it start to get really thick and you'll see all the thickening power of that bread flour. Don't get nervous if it's super thick at this point. When it's thick, that's when we can get out any flour clumps that we may have and really mix them in. So once I stop seeing any dry bits in the bottom of my bowl, that's when I'm gonna add this last amount of eggs. I really wanna use my rubber spatula and scrape this bowl really, really well to get all of my ingredients mixed in. A lot of times when you just dump one bowl into the other and you don't take the time to scrape the bowl, not only do you waste a little bit of product and not really get all your money's worth out of that, you can really kind of damage your recipe by not having all your ingredients fully mixed in. So, still looking pretty thick, right? Not what we think of when we think of cake batter. Now we're going to be folding in our inclusion here, which is shredded carrots. I have a really large amount of shredded carrots. That's so 215 grams, almost equal to my amount of flour. And I'm just going to fold that in with my rubber spatula. I need to get all this batter off of my whisk first. Now, like I said earlier, this can get substituted for any really firm fruit or vegetable. So think pears, apples, parsnips, beets if you're feeling a little crazy, or some thicker purees such as banana, pumpkin, sweet potato, things like that. This can really be a versatile cake base. Now we know that hygroscopic sugar wants to draw out moisture. There's a lot of moisture in fruit and vegetables. So you'll see the texture of this completely change as we add this in. So I'm folding, not stirring it, not really whisking at this point. I'm just taking the bottom, flipping it over to the top, and continuing to turn that bowl so that I'm completely mixing my batter. And you'll see as the sugar draws the moisture out of the carrots, it's going to become much more fluid. See how that batter is really much more runny now, much more like a cake batter. Now, blending method cakes are usually not very fluffy. They don't rise as much. They're much more moist on the inside and they're much more dense on the inside, but they're very, very tasty. So we have our beautiful carrot cake batter. Now, a lot of times when I get down to the end, I do like to taste this because depending on whether your fruit or vegetable is in season um, or the quality of that ingredient, you might want to adjust the salt or the spices. And you can do that without really changing the chemical makeup of this. You don't want to add more baking soda or more flour or anything like that. But those spices and seasonings aren't really going to change this. So feel free to play around with that if you want to taste this. 
Now, if you get really weirded out by eating raw eggs, there's not really much you can do about that. But chances are, as long as your eggs have been refrigerated and you bought them from a reputable source, that's not really gonna be an issue here. So, now we have our beautiful batter and we have our prepared pan from earlier, right? So we wanna fill this up about three quarters of the way, which should take just about all of our cake batter. So I really wanna scrape this out and get as much as possible out of this. Now, professionally when I'm baking cakes, I like to bake individual layers. What's that, what that means is if I want three layers of cake and two layers of filling, I'll bake three separate layers. But for the purpose of this, I really want to show you guys how to be able to tort cakes. Torting means slicing them into layers, and that means you need to have one nice large cake. So ideally this batter, when we're mixing it, you shouldn't really see any more dry ingredients. There shouldn't be any clumps of carrots. It should look pretty homogenous all the way through, and it should be fluid enough to kind of pan out flat. One extra step that you can take to make sure that you don't have any large air bubbles inside your cake is just to kind of shake it and tap it a little bit and let those air bubbles rise to the top. So you can see that this looks really nice and fluid. So we're gonna get it into the oven. So here's my finished cake that is completely fresh from the oven. As you can tell, when I gently press it, it bounces right back. It doesn't leave any indentations at all. And that's one of my uh, primary ways of testing for if a cake is done. The second is you can use the skewer method. You can insert a skewer right into the middle, pull it out, and you want it to come out completely clean. If there's any moistness on your skewer at all, then your cake's not quite done and you probably need a few more minutes. You can also see that with fat-based cakes, we tend to see a little bit of the cake pulling away from the edges as it's done. So you can see that small kind of gap around the edges. Now you won't see that with sponge cakes, but you will see it with your creaming method and blending method cakes. So what I'm gonna do is I have this on my cooling rack and I'm gonna allow that to cool uh, just until it's cool enough that I can handle the pan without burning myself. Then I'll remove it from the pan. If I try to remove it from the pan right now, it's very fragile while it's warm and I might risk breaking my cake. So I don't wanna do that. Let it cool just a little bit to start to firm up. I'll remove it from the pan and allow it to continue cooling until it's room temperature before I wrap it up. I rarely fill or ice cakes the day that they're baked. I usually let them go overnight in the refrigerator um, it's a main issue that people have if you're baking and filling the same day and you have a really soft or warm cake, it will damage your filling and it will not be very structurally sound. So you have to be very careful with that. Now that our cake has cooled slightly, we're going to release the sides of the pan gently with an offset spatula. You can also use a knife, a uh, paring knife. But you want to make sure that when you push this in that you're pushing towards the outside of the pan and not gouging into the cake. So I'm just going to run this all the way around the outside just to make sure that the sides have completely released before I turn this out. So I get nice, smooth, beautiful sides. Now that I've done that, I'm just gonna invert this so that the cake should slide right out of the pan. And then I don't want it to cool like this because that mound on the top might cause it to crack in the center. So I'm gonna flip it back over and I'm just gonna allow it to cool just like this until it is completely room temperature. And now we have our carrot cake. So I will be finishing this carrot cake in another video where we're gonna talk about filling and icing cakes. So you'll get to see that later on if you want. Um, but this is essentially my finished product. 
Because I want you to kind of get to see the interior texture of this, I'm going to go ahead and just trim that top level. I'll show you how to do torting later, but I really want you to see the kind of crumb and moisture level that we're looking at with a cake like this. So I'm just going to take a serrated knife. I want to make sure that I'm holding it completely even and flat. I'm just going to move across the cake like this. So I'm not cutting it all the way flush yet, but you can see that I have a really nice moist crumb on the inside. I have a little bit of bubbles for my leavener and it looks nice and delicious. Thanks so much for watching this traditional carrot cake video. Make sure you check out other videos. Um, I will be posting a video comparing this cake with creaming method cakes and other sponge cakes so that you can kind of visually get to see the difference, as well as another video where I'll be filling and icing and decorating this cake so you can see the final product. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed it and please stay tuned for more things. Thanks!